This is Presenter Search on 3, proudly brought to you by NetBank. Tonight is full of surprises as the contestants making up the national top 30 from Cape Town and Port Elizabeth get a taste of presenting, all under the watchful eye of recognized industry experts. While three of the 30 will go on to launch their dream careers as presenters, two savvy NetBank account holders will get a taste of the jet set life and win a trip for two to Zanzibar courtesy of NetBank. If you're a savvy NetBank account holder, SMS the keyword DREAMS along with a short description of your dream island experience to 33728. That's 33728 to make the things that really matter happen. Welcome to Presenter Search on 3. The nationwide auditions are finally over and our top 30 have been found. Well, sort of. We found all of our finalists except three. And these three lucky wildcard competitors will be revealed in this episode and the next, where all of our finalists will be mentored by some of the industry greats. Leanne is off to deliver the good news. I'm here to surprise Mishka Patel. She's currently playing golf with her boyfriend's mother. Let's go and surprise her, come on. Mishka Patel! <laughs> Hi! How are you? Good, how are you? So good. So I have a big surprise for you. The judges have re-looked at your audition, re-looked at your entire process, and they want you back into the competition as a wild card. You're in the top 30, honey! Wait, what, are you, you're serious? I'm serious. Don't you go, don't you go away! Come here! Hello, <laughs> <laughs> oh, This is unbelievable. They are Amazing. Oh, wow! Oh, my word, I'm so excited! <laughs> That's Zoe Brown at the back there. She comes to this coffee shop every day just ahead of her radio show and we're about to go and give her the good news. Hello, Zoe. <laughs> oh my goodness. Surprise! How are you? <laughs> I'm good. What are you doing here? <laughs> well, I know you think you saw the last of me, but you have just been called back to be in the top 30. Our judges loved you so much. They're bringing back wild cards and you, my love, are one of them. Congratulations. Oh this is a joke. This is happening. You are not being punked right now. This is real. This, She's so I'm, shocked. You are so shocked. You have no words. Oh, oh my goodness. I, I did not expect this, honestly. I, I, I How did you find me? <laughs> We have people everywhere. And so with Zoe and Mishka on board, 11 Cape Town finalists proceed to their very first presenting masterclass. I still haven't comprehended that I'm in the top 30. It's just crazy to think out of all those people. I just can't get over it. It's a bit of sweet. You know, it's exciting for you, but you're like, oh wow, there's only going to be 10 left. Especially knowing the caliber of people that have entered this competition, making the top 30 of this entire country is, wow, can't even put words to it. Well, hello, Cape Town contestants. You guys all look absolutely incredible. Welcome to your very first masterclass. Now, a masterclass is incredibly important. It's your chance to get expert advice by some of the top presenting talent and industry professionals in South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the incredible Noni Gaza. <laughs> Sure. When Noni walks around that corner, I've got that cheeky smile on my face <laughs> like a complete idiot just because she's so cool, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. You all look so gorgeous. We, we've just met, but I already feel like I can tell a lot about you just by looking at your outfits. And that's really important. It's important to retain that sense of identity and to recognize yourself when you're on screen. Noni Gasa is a veteran in the industry. For her to walk in and actually be able to talk and we get to listen, it's an honor. Right, you ready to have some fun with fashion? Yes. yes. You're gonna be divided into four groups of two and one group of three. Once you've decided on your final look and you're camera ready, you will present your partner's looks to camera. Already fully dressed in outfits from Woolworths, each contestant had to enhance their look by selecting one additional item. So I got my suspenders on, which really reveals my funky side. But I really wanna show people a bit of my professional and serious side. So I'm gonna whip on a blazer. Uh, checked out Studio W. They have tall models that are quite built. Went to Studio W and uh, I find the jacket that suits me. When I put it on, it fits like a glove. It felt good in the body. 
It felt like it was made for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Kanye is sporting quite a smooth grey and a bit of a tinge of a, of a navy jacket accompanying his navy trousers as well and quite the striking brown shoes you've got there, isn't Thanks, it? Bro. Thanks, bro. <laughs> and underneath it all, just a buttoned up shirt, no tie needed. You know, that, uh, that just shows that you're ever ready for some fun, isn't it? You know, <laughs> you know. and this right here is Sunday. Whenever oh, he yeah. smiles, he lights up a room, just like his outfit, loving <laughs> and fun. Bow tie, colorful, loves his theater, oh, yeah. and his fitted natural color blazer. He's about his business. In fact, we're about our business. Yeah. Wingman, striker. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm the striker. Striker, striker. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, fine. Striker, striker. <laughs> I'm really enjoying what he has to say, but I'm really the striker. Guys, I absolutely loved that delivery. I loved it. You guys are so fun and effervescent. You bring this energy and there's a chemistry amongst you, which you really played up. And, and thanks so much for that. It was great watching you. Kanya, you look suave. I really like the way your look has come together. You had a darker jacket on before that, am I correct? Matching jacket with the pants. A matching jacket that matches the pants right I think you should have kept that jacket only because that looks great off camera, but um, we do have a problem with strobing because of the very thin uh, pinstripes on the jacket, but otherwise it's, it's lovely. Sander, love the character in your outfit. There's so much personality there. The bow tie is a very unique, playful touch. However, you probably want to steer away from too much jewelry. It probably is your signature look, but on camera, you definitely need something uh, less busy, so more timeless, elegant, less is more. Nambita, Ben Mazwi and Jade Hubner are absolutely breathtaking. But are they camera ready? So the outfit I'm wearing, I absolutely love it. So if I have to change something, I'm thinking maybe to change the belt because my shoes are a beige colour. So I'm thinking maybe a beige belt to balance the shoes. I'm holding my belt, I'm holding the ring and I'm just... I have no idea what to do, but that pop of orange from the ring is just, it's gonna complement my dress. So it has to be it. Now what I love about her winter look is exactly the dull dark color because it's actually giving her a chance to bring out her beautiful hair. Focus on the face, lights up, which is important for camera. I mean, yes, right? Of course. And the length. Her gorgeous legs are still there, not too short, not too long. But I want to focus on the piece that she decided to add on because it's giving her an actual way. Symmetry is very important. Now this dress has this pattern and this pop of colour which we're seeing across the globe. And for good reason, it's amazing. With this dress, why I particularly love it uh, for Nambita is because Nambita has this bubbly, energetic personality and this dress screams personality, right? I love what Jade has to say. And she's keeping it natural, which is which is very comfortable for me. Nambita, I love the headpiece. I, I think it's a nice touch and it sets you apart from everyone else. Um, I see that individuality is really important to you. Like the dress too, only thing is on camera, those really fine patterns strobe and it's not such a good idea. And we miss the best part of the dress at the bottom, the, the red. Bottom. I know. So your, your wonderful accessory, your ring, your red ring doesn't really, you know, pick up on, on that feature. Jade, very risky choice going for a heavy wool. Um, I do understand it's winter, but if you have the option of keeping your choices, light as, as possible, you should do so. Great choice with the belt though, nice color. It accentuates the gray, I think. Just be careful with the knots. It's so tempting to tie those amazing I knots. Find a way to it's just not long enough. It, yeah. it kind of looks awkward. So it's mm. a really short belt. So mm. kind of, uh, you know, work with what you have. Yeah. But otherwise, great looks, ladies. The beautiful trio of Shelly Nicole, Kosa speaking Kaylee van der Kolk, and Nona Latose are set to blow us away with their fashion style. Looking at myself in the mirror, I feel like my outfit is really not streamlined. I'd like to just cinch in the waist a bit, so I'm adding a belt now. I am looking to potentially change this white top, but if I can't find a top that suits, then I'm going to go for an accessory. I'm really keen on the belt that I'm wearing, so I really want to match it up with a really nice statement piece of jewelry. 
Okay, so because Kaylee is the beautiful girl from the East End Cape, Kukajana, we decided to add a lovely African neck piece. It's a beaded piece and it's very long, so we put it close to her neck so it can complement her whole outfit. And then we have Nala in a gorgeous little number from Woolies, a little black number. And all we've done is add the simple black waistband, which just accentuates her already gorgeous curves. Next up we have Shelly, and um, she's opted for a very simple yet fresh look definitely moving away from the conventional winter colours. And what we've done with a simple addition of earrings is we've taken the focus away from the belt, put it onto her gorgeous face. For me, I've come from a corporate background, so diving into this is absolutely new. But I really, I'm feeling more and more confident and enjoying the process more and more. I'm just going to quickly touch on one point. I love the necklace. I do, however, think it presents a challenge for the sound engineer, because as you can tell, they've got to mic you. And if it sits really high, especially on your collarbone, this is obviously a challenge. Shelly, <laughs> love the colour. Pastels are the perfect tone for camera. I like this touch with um, the gold belt. It really worked well. As well as your earrings, I think you could have really gotten out of hand with your <laughs> yeah. accessorising. But I like that you kept the neckline very clean and simple. Nala. Noni. She with the beautiful legs. Thank you. <laughs> Look, I've got to ask, did you just turn a jersey into a dress. <laughs> I did. I definitely did. Great for a night out, bad idea for TV. I mean, you have to remember that there's a wide demographic that tunes into the show. Yeah. Some very conservative, some very liberal, young, old, and I think some people out there might take offense to that. You yeah. do look stunning, and again, you've got a beautiful figure to pull it off, mm -hmm. but just be mindful of those yeah. kinds of decisions. Smooth and suave Dean Boerta suited up for the occasion, and the bubbly Zoe Brown chose a color to reflect her personality. I really like my bright shirt, so I was thinking maybe just changing up my necklace, something more simple. This is quite clunky for camera. Love it. Okay, sorted. In my callback audition, uh, Jenny D said that she would really like to see me in a suit, so I decided not to mix it up too much. I just went from a suit with a light shirt to a suit with a dark shirt. And can I just say the fact that his shirt is so close in shades to his suit, you cannot help but focus on his gorgeous face. So when Dean presents, you will not be able to take your eyes off him. I thought Zoe was on the ball. She delivered it in a fun, friendly way, and I think her description of what I was wearing kind of hit the nail on the head. So his outfit is a combination of modern and classic. We've got the classic dark black high heels that should be in every woman's artillery the new and fresh black pants which are cropped at the ankle and then this nice light bold eye-catching orange blouse that kind of demands your attention straight away i really like dean's take i think he is on point it's so nice to hear what a guy thinks of a girl's outfit dean yes you look lean mean and clean thank i feel you. like you've done this before your delivery was effortless thank you very much i've attempted it yeah <laughs> <laughs> why did you change your shirt um I don't know, I just felt that the, the light blue was maybe daytime, dark blue maybe nighttime, or as you said earlier on, we're going into winter, darker colors, a little warmer. I like that, good choice. Thank you. Zoe. Yes. You look stunning. I must commend you, very good choice on changing your neck piece. The other one was far too distracting and had the potential of becoming a problem on set with miking, etc., etc. The choice of color, tangerine, red, pinks, these are considered hot colors. And hot colors are very dangerous because they tend to what we call bleed or run on screen. So try steer away from those. Otherwise, in person, it looks stunning. Can six foot tall model Mishka Patel and the cheeky Danilo Akisto walk the walk and talk the talk? So I'm running through the store thinking, I can't add anything to this outfit. It's too perfect. It's got like, it's tight, it's fitted. And then I see the watch. Yeah, yeah. This one's got the same color as my shoes. Love. I absolutely love this. Perfect, I love that. Perfect, it brings the look together. Okay. Yes, you happy? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Dan is looking absolutely smashing today. <laughs> Thank you. Love the fact that he went for a business-like look. It's neat, it's formal, perfect for today's occasion, of course. And everyone who knows Dan knows he has a quirky, fun personality, and I feel this tie just brings his quirky side out a little bit. I feel kind of like an ant standing next to you, so I'm gonna go on my tippy toes as I describe this outfit, but Mishka okay? could, that's fine. Mishka could literally walk out in a nightie and look incredible. She's beautiful, she's tall, super dark skin. So what she's done is she's chosen quite a nice summery color. Colorful brings out her vibrant energy. It shows off her skin and her beautiful eyes and her long brown hair. 
So I'm staring up at Mishka, who's this tower next to me, and I'm thinking, how do you describe a girl's clothing that sounds like it's a guy describing it, but it's also cool, but it's also trendy, but it's pretty confusing. Mishka and Danilo, I'm having a hard time trying to choose which one between the two is more beautiful. <laughs> okay, you guys are straight out of Vogue. Thank it's you. so wrong. Thank you. So wrong. <laughs> It goes without saying, you're a stunning girl. Everything works to your Thank favor. You. Your height, your eyes, your hair, it just, it all comes together perfectly. However, I do have to critique you on your choice of outfit. The top is just wrong. Okay. It's hanging too low, it's cut too low, it doesn't quite fit, you know, your bra shows every now and again. Not a good thing. Danilo. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out exactly what it is that you changed up. What, what I, did you switch up? So I added the watch. Because ah. yeah, I felt like nothing else could have fitted no, on this outfit. No, that doesn't no? count. Okay. That doesn't count. It's not <laughs> visible on. enough. I'm sorry. The challenge was to switch okay. your outfit up. So it should have been something more visible, like a handkerchief, cufflinks, mm -hmm. a necktie, something that would just accentuate an already great outfit. Next up, from Fashion Forward presenting tips to whisks and twists, our Cape Town finalists get hot under the collar. Welcome back to Presenter Search on 3. For the next challenge, the finalists from the Mother City find out what's cooking in the Espresso Kitchen. Hello, Cape Town contestants. You guys look incredible. Welcome to my neck of the woods, the Espresso Morning Show Studio, also known as the best place on earth. <laughs> I'm quite positive it's got something to do with cooking, but I hope we're not going to be doing much of the cooking. It's going to be something cool, something fun, and um, I'm quite excited. Well, the fact that we're in our kitchen this morning should give away what your masterclass is going to be about, but I'm not going to say anything. I will let your mentor spill the beans. See what I did there? <laughs> And your mentor today has trained in the kitchens of Gordon Ramsay, Marcus Waring, as well as many other international cooking greats. Please put your hands together for the sensational, the delectable, the talented, Neil Anthony, the private chef. Neil Anthony walks in and I'm like, oh goodness, we are going to be cooking. And not just any cooking, something really crazy. So I'm a big fan, so it's an absolute honor to meet him. I'm very excited to start learning from him immediately. I'm gonna run you through three quick dishes, so I'm gonna crack on. Awesome, well, See they're all yours. Them. See you later. <laughs> there are a couple of do's and don'ts, obvious do's and don'ts on uh, cooking on camera, don't swear which is hard. <laughs> Don't ever taste things, put it in your mouth and taste something else. So always have a little pot of spoons or whatever you're gonna be tasting with. The most important thing I think is you need to be in the right sort of headspace. You need to know where everything is. This is where a good food stylist comes involved and they are able to set up your set for you and all that sort of stuff. So always be kind to your food stylist. While that pan's heating up, make a little vinaigrette for our salad, a bacon vinaigrette of knowing where things are in your kitchen. Works quite nicely. Always explaining as you go along as well. There's also no use to keep on talking all the time, all the time, all the time. The salad needs to be fresh, needs to be dressed nicely and brought together with a little bit of panache and a little bit of fun. Also another thing that's nice to do is give it like a derivative of the dish. So this one I'm making with whole eggs. But you can say to camera, you know, you can make this one with just egg whites or, you know, give them a fun little tip or a fun little derivative. The omelette needs to go straight into a hot, fresh, clean pan, delicately garnished, slid straight out, eaten straight away. So it's very quick. Yogurt, almond butter. The smoothie needs to be quick, fast, fresh, and ice cold. The most important thing with a smoothie is that while the machine is going, the presenter can't look lost. They need to look interested and keep that contact with the camera. And that's it. Three very simple, very fast dishes. Your challenge for today is not to make all three, but only to make one. And... Oh. Oh, you gonna... I can't cook. <laughs> 
To be honest, I'm a bit nervous because I'm not the best chef or the most experienced. <laughs> Hey, I'm excited. I'm Italian. I love cooking. A cooking challenge. I love a cooking challenge. So, if you pull one of these out, it'll tell you exactly what you're making. With the options of a salad, omelette or smoothie, the contestants are assigned their recipes at random. Some get what they want and others will have to face their greatest culinary fears. First on the menu is a seemingly simple dressed bacon and baby leaf salad. A combination of sweet and savoury flavours, fresh spices with crispy bacon bits and squeezed lemon juice promises to be a tasty, healthy and presenter friendly dish. Today I'm going to be making Neil Anthony salad, which is the perfect salad for those who are in the rush. So, we've got all our ingredients here, which is great. Um, we're going to make a lovely vinaigrette first. So we're going to add some chives to this honey. You can just grab a bunch and quickly cut them in. I'm presenting my dish. And it's going well. I'm loving it, I'm having fun, the setting is beautiful, all the ingredients are laid out for me, I'm loving it, it's, it's so exciting. And then, I just grab the spoon, I grab the mustard. I don't really pay attention to the size of the mustard bowl or the size of my spoon, and I start coming in, coming in to do this. All right, this isn't fitting, so this isn't clever to do at all. All right, so let's grab the small one over here. So I looked a bit like a blonde, my color came through. So um, yeah, I just improv and grabbed the little spooner that I luckily saw in the corner of my eye. I mean, the nice thing about the little gem leaves are that they are nice and crispy, so you can have that crunch to your salad. I just have to remember to name the right ingredients, and I think for me, it's just to keep talking. Just don't have silence in the air and not to chop my fingers. That was the important thing. And like I said, salad's always fun if you add something different. So if you want to add some nuts or some fruit pieces or even dried out fruit, it's a lot of fun. So there you have it for our challenge today. I made you a nice little salad. It was nice, quick and easy. I think my salad came out all right. Buongiorno and welcome back to the kitchen here at Presenter Search on 3. So usually this segment is called Italiano Mangiato, but today it's the second hand chef. As you can see, not an accident in the kitchen, thank goodness. I'm thinking it can't be very hard to put salad and dressing together, but the minute you have to start sticking spoons in jars and the thought of having to remove the spoon afterwards and where do you put the spoon and then you put the spoon next to the mayonnaise, I mean the mustard, and you don't really know what I do next and then I forgot the chives and then I had to link out and it was a bit stressful. I've had complaints from uh, people I've cooked for before that say sometimes it's hard to put the whole lettuce leaf in your mouth. You don't look like that awkward kid going, uh, trying to put the whole lettuce in your mouth. So I like to break it up just a little bit. You know, I was kind of hoping that my dish would have looked slightly more attractive when I was tossing it with one hand and throwing things in the air. So everything's kind of sunk to the bottom and it was just a bunch of green leaves on top. Um, but I was kind of happy. And the nice thing about these kinds of dishes, salads particularly, the messier it looks, the more attractive it is for me. Okay, so we're going to start with chopping up our chives. My box is not cooperating with me and just because of that, my hands start shaking. From there, what, what else could go wrong? I just hope it elevates and it really just takes off and shows my personality without knocking too many things over or not doing anything. A beautiful salad for people on the go. Join us next time for more quick and easy delicious meals. Well, how hard is it to cook and present food on TV? It's not that hard, is it? <laughs> it depends if you miss an ingredient. Yeah. <laughs> Jade, be careful with your jewellery. Take it right off. People don't like to see people with jewellery. Handling food. But yeah, very good delivery. Um, very sort of you're nice and strong and vibrant. Um, so yours is a bit long. You need to just, you know, tighten it up and shorten it, but then be quite sort of punch pointy. Okay. But um, yeah, very nice and nice and vibrant again and nice and colourful. Dan, yours is also very nice and sort of energetic. But what you did first is you stood there and explained the whole dish and spoke about it, spoke about it, spoke about it, and then you did it. You must be able to do that and cook and present at the same time. Um, yet again, yours as well. Doesn't matter if you despise bacon, baby gem, mustard, honey, and even that goes into the salad. Never say you don't like it. Okay. Because you're very excited about cooking this thing and then you're like, oh, I don't really like mustard, but you put it in. <laughs> so yeah, just pick it weary of stuff like that. So guys, very well done on, uh, on cooking and presenting at the same time. And the best thing about being a part of a food show is you get to eat what you've done. <laughs> Next up, who cracks under the pressure and who scrambles their delivery? Watch how wannabe presenters serve up their omelettes and smoothies. The best time to drive the new C-Class is now.
we're back in the kitchen and next on the menu is the humble omelet with just a few fresh and simple ingredients a little zest and creamy flavor and of course a couple of free range eggs it's the perfect meal to welcome the crack of dawn welcome to the kitchen we're making an omelet and well an omelet is just a fancy way of making an egg with a lot of character so there are cameras all around and i'm in the kitchen that's a first and I'm a bit nervous, I must say, because I'm trying to make this meal work and at the same time, I'm trying to look at the camera. I think it's going okay. The egg seems to be going fine. So we've cracked open our eggs. We're gonna be um, mixing that up a little bit as we go along, all right? Keeping in mind, obviously, that our pan is nice and hot. We're gonna be adding some creme fraiche and, as I say, some salmon. And I grab the trout and I keep calling it salmon. No matter, no matter how much I'm reading trout, keep calling it salmon, I'm putting it in there and I'm kind of thinking I'm a bit of a fool as we go along. And then what we want to do is just take some of the salmon and I feel the story of my mother maybe saved me a little bit, or at least I'm hoping that at the time. I say, whenever I cook it with anything like this in a pan, it always actually reminds me of my, um, my mom teaching me how to cook in a pan. And I was trying to cook by actually scraping on this, I could barely see. I mean, I cooked it until it's absolute death, but um, my mom said it tasted good, so we went with that anyway. Take your eggs, one by one. Okay. Do it like this. A spatula is supposed to crack an egg, but this spatula is not doing that. But okay, move on. I'll crack it with both hands. Uh, mixing it up, the pan is still burning. And I mean, it's going smoothly until the egg gets on the pan. And then I start to panic, because I don't know what I'm doing. Make sure you have control of everything that's happening on the stove. Now, if you have a guest, you can go ahead and put it on a plate. But I mean, we're guys. I kind of rough it up. I don't need a plate. Well, well done, guys. You've all produced uh, edible products, I would have thought. It's the most important thing. <laughs> You said you don't like using olive oil. Never say that. We'll add some of our say olive oil you, onto the pan. You know, your preference is coconut, but today I'm using this. Never say I don't like using something, because then that automatically does go. Very good voice, very good energy. So you were very good. You had an amazing level, and then you just went like that. And your finish was very strong. You said the voila. And voila. It's nice to have a little catchphrase, but you know, not that whole sort of Gordon Ramsay sort of smack your hands done sort of thing. Your delivery in the beginning, it's very bullet pointy. It looks like you're reading. Um, but yeah, I mean, your recovery with the spatula is very cool as well. And you made it quite fun and you make it quite sort of approachable, which is the most important thing as well when watching a cooking program. If your program was cool cooking for dummies, it would make a million. <laughs> <laughs> A healthy blend of yogurt, berries, honey and bananas are the staples of a sweet and tasty smoothie. But whose smoothie will go smoothly? In the morning, you get up, you have five minutes to go to gym, or after gym you just want to grab something quick to eat. And the best thing you can do is to make a smoothie. First we're going to add a lot of berries, yum. Maybe that's a little bit too much, but that will do for now. I poured in the berries and literally every single berry fell into the machine. Gave me a little bit of a fright. So then I just tossed in all of the other ingredients and I hope it came out all right. <laughs> you can add an avo or you don't really have to, but I prefer it with an avo because for that extra little bit of texture. Basically threw all the ingredients in, went perfectly and then everything fell out of the glass, and that might happen, yes. Kind of a bit of a flop, but it went okay after that, got a bit nervous, but it went well. I'm hoping this is not too thick. <laughs> not being able to open the blender, it's, it's something that I'm not expecting, and there it goes. <gasps> Smoothie everywhere. That shouldn't happen, that's for sure. Maybe I should actually call Neil Anthony, the real chef, to come help me. Oh, he is here. Thank you. Things kind of just got a bit messy. My heart went into this. <laughs> and, on, and your heart went around the table. And well. you know, it shows that Nam was in the kitchen. That's, that's, I left a mark. Very good. And action. Good afternoon and welcome to Cooking with Kaylee, aka South Africa's very own Nigel Lawson. So now, 
All of our ingredients are in the tub, and I'm sure you're sick of me bantering. Everything's going well. Um, I get to the part where I need to, where all the ingredients are in the smoothie, and I push blend. So let's um, put that on and let's mix it up and see what happens. And it doesn't work. There's not enough liquid. And that's when I panic and, you immediate, and I immediately think, can I open it? Do I need to take the smoothie off and um, put some liquid in? And yeah, it was, a, it was a feeling of panic as though, oh dear, this has gone very wrong. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be making the meanest smoothie known to mankind. So everything seems to be going well with the intro introduction and naming the berries that I have and different ingredients and whatnot, until I put them all into the blender, all well and dandy, until I switch it on and it starts to move, but I'd forgotten the milk. All right, let's, uh, let's get busy. It seems as if uh, it seems as if the technology has uh, somewhat disappointed me. But then I grab a spoon just to get the grub out the out the bottom, so that the blender can actually start moving once again. The knowledge of blending machines just escaped my mind for a wee bit, but got back to it. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please have yourself a fruitful day. <laughs> well, uh, ladies and gents, I think you all underestimated the difficulty of the smoothie. <laughs> you all drew the short straw, clearly. <laughs> Mishka, you need to be careful of what you say when you're putting things in. Okay. You have an initial response to things in, I mean, you said something like you add the honey for texture, and then you would, honey for texture wouldn't really, honey doesn't add any texture to anything really. Um, but yeah, very good on the sort of variations of you know, delivery in terms of what you can do with different fruits and all the, you know, different flavours and giving your thing a name was nice. Your berry blast is your best option. Nambita, well... <laughs> <laughs> all right, give it yeah, to you, me. You, you, you recovered well from that, it was, it was good. Yeah, I mean, look, it's unfortunate. In terms of the machine coming off, you just need to basically know how your machine works before you start doing anything. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, very good delivery, lots of fun facts and... You know, very, of course, very well spoken. Yeah, Kaylee, yeah, very cool. Um, a little bit long winded. You have a very good presenter's voice, but it's almost too presentary for food because it sounds, it's not conversational enough. But yeah, very well spoken, very um, approachable. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, nice smoothie, I would have thought. Sander? Yeah. Um, a little bit fast. Wow. Talk. We talk a lot, which is cool, but yeah, it just becomes, a, it's very, very quick. Just slow it down a couple of notches and take a breath in between sentences. But yeah, very strong finish as well. Nice ending, nice little... Alright, thank you. All around and uh, bottoms up. Cheers, guys. Bold. Cheers, ladies. That one's for the table. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Private Chef. How's it going? Very good. So you're washing up already? Well, they're good presenters, but they are very, very bad washer-uppers. Well, you called them good presenters, so I'm gathering that they did do well in the challenge? They did very well. The, the judges are going to have a field day. Mm -hmm. They need to look out for good interaction on camera, keeping everything nice and tidy, and not repeating themselves too much, I think, is the most important thing. But they will seem to have a lot of fun on screen. Next up, it's the three finalists from Port Elizabeth who face up to some tough tutoring. Welcome back to Presenter Search on 3. We're in Port Elizabeth, a city rich in history, where three finalists, Masinga Hune, Pumza Buntle, and Michaela Wistazen, have their chance to glean advice from two much loved on air personalities. Good morning, PE contestants. Now, it's a gorgeous day in the friendly and windy city, and it's perfect for your very first masterclass. Your mentor today is one of the most popular faces on South African TV, and she's got a fabulous career that spans many different media fields. She's got a face for TV and a voice for radio. Please put your hands together for the gorgeous and incomparable Ursula Chikani. 
I cannot believe that Ursula is here. She's someone that I've respected for so many years and because of that I'm extra nervous now because she's not only been successful in the entertainment industry but it's the fact that she's been able to do so for so many years that makes her just the ultimate person to meet. So this is PE's finest? This is PE's finest. Permission to approach? <laughs> Absolutely, all yours. Congratulations! Woo! PE's top three. I'm going to share with you some tips that have seen me through the industry over many, many years. And no matter what happens in your careers, if you just remember these few things, you're in for the long haul, all right? And it has to do with discipline and longevity. Are you ready? In this top hat, I have your very first challenge. Let's see which locations you choose. The locations are each landmarks along Nelson Mandela Bay's Route 67 in the Donkin Reserve. Arriving in this part of the world, Sir Rufin Duncan erected this monument as... <laughs> Upon arriving in this part of the world, Sir Rufin Duncan erected this pyramid to serve as a monument and a memory to his late wife, Elizabeth. Dude, your, your piece of paper said... The lighthouse. Lighthouse. And we can't see the pyramid. So your link should have been about. When I was going through the links with them, before they had to present, I said, have you guys checked your facts? Are you sure you're talking about the right thing? Well, lo and behold, he wasn't. Now you're going to have to bring in all your personality and sell it because you don't have facts or figures. I must get it somewhere in my brain to think on my feet. Somehow it needs to make sense. I, don't, I just mumble on words and I get stuck. I need to learn to think on my feet. Years after being decommissioned, this monument still serves as an important part of the history of Port Elizabeth. It's beautiful. So let's go inside and see what happens. Now that's not how I taught you to it's end a link. Yeah. Now let's see if she's as beautiful on the inside as she's on the outside. Let's go. He listened for once. Very good. Nice. He listened. Having researched the wrong landmark, Masinga was forced to think on his feet and improvise about the lighthouse. 85 steps to get to the top and it's all been worth it. With the country's highest flag point at my view, some of the city's cheekiest artwork... I could have walked up to him, taken him by the shoulders and said, what are you thinking? Because away from camera, you don't know this, but I gave them pointers. I said that when you look off camera, you're off mic. I said that's one of the things you absolutely cannot do. Whoever said life on top was boring was a very short man. The Duncan Reserve in Port Elizabeth is famous for its marvellous collection of historical artwork. One that instantly caught my eye is the untitled the untitled sculpture of a woman. No, doll, you can't stop and go and stop and go. When you stop walking, you can't like relaunch again. It doesn't make sense. When you end, you end. I don't know what your last sentence means, but anyway. <laughs> With some tough love from Ursula, Pumza upped her game. The Duncan Reserve in Port Elizabeth is famous for its amazing collection of historical artwork. One that instantly caught my eye is the untitled sculpture of a woman, which is also the representation of friendly power and persistence. I don't know what Pumza was thinking by ending off her first link so very nonsensically. And I told them over and over again, you've got to have a start, a middle and an ending. And the ending has to be really strong. She's called the neutral woman as well. Um, Tony did mention there that. There you she's go. She's called the neutral woman as well. So it's up to the person looking at her to decide just who she is and where she's from. And act. The Duncan Reserve in Port Elizabeth is famous for its marvellous collection of historical artwork. One that instantly caught my eye is the untitled sculpture of a woman. She's also called the neutral woman. So it's up to you that's looking to decide who she is and where she's from. <laughs> and I've got to give it to Pumza. When she was corrected and told exactly what to do, she took it on board and she came back with what I thought was a relatively good link. Quite strong. I had to make a last minute change to my link. It was scary because I didn't know if I'd be able to just grasp everything in a matter of seconds and adapt to the entire thing. 
um, but I think, I think I tried my best. After all the sculptural pieces, I find myself at the base of the South African flag and it feels completely unreal just the thought of, I was only a baby when the first democratic elections took place. These life-size figures sure to make the 1994 voters... Sorry. Relive the moment. Relive the moment. Shame, it's a pity that you fell apart, eh? Hey? And you don't get any more chances. We've done like 100,000 takes. After all the sculptural pieces, I'm now standing at the balcony of the city. You're not standing, you're walking. I am now standing at the balcony of the city. These life-size figs uh, at the base of the South African flag. There was no way that she was going to get it right. Even if we spent another half an hour on that link, she was just too frazzled and the panic had set in. You could see it in her eyes. With Port Elizabeth's rich history, we thought we'd pay a visit to the Donkin Memorial Centre, as well as Route 67 which incidentally is the number of steps that make up this staircase. During my first link, I am standing on steps and all I keep thinking is do not fall, do not fall and do not fall. With Port Elizabeth's rich history, we thought we'd pay a visit to the Donkin Reserve and Route 67, which incidentally is the number of steps that make up this staircase, all signifying the age at which Nelson Mandela became the country's first democratically elected state president. Okay, Del, all in all, I was really happy with your delivery. However, your facts were a bit thin. Nelson Mandela was how old? 67. No, he when was... When he became president. He was 76. So what you did in your research is you I misread. Correct. You've got to pay attention yes. to that kind of detail because you could be shooting abroad. We cannot afford to fly you back there to do a pickup link. See what happens when you don't get your research right? You invert legendary people's ages. I cannot believe that I got such a well-known fact wrong. I know that the president was 76 when he became president of this country, but um, just in that moment, I guess my, my nerves are taking control of me and I really just need to calm down. And I made it. 67 steps later and my heart rate is about 67 beats per second, but it's all worth it being welcomed by that incredible sight, the flattering South African flag. Okay, do us again. That was overdue. <laughs> and I made it. No, if you need to really, really tie yourself, go down to the bottom and walk up. And I made it. 67 steps later and my heart rate is about 67 beats per second but it's all worth it being greeted by that incredible sight, the flattering South African flag. My total impression about Michaela is that it's going to take a long time to get the pageant girl out of her, but if she's committed to doing that, she could definitely go a long way. <laughs> so, Ursula, how did it go? Well, there is one of the three that I think has the makings of a good presenter, but I don't know how the judges will see it. Well, they have the important task of scrutinizing that footage, and of course, they need all of your feedback. Make sure that you stay tuned to our next masterclass to see how our PE contestants do because we are looking for that all important top 10. Up next, Mops Mapunyani shows our three PE candidates there's a lot more to presenting than meets the eye. Flymango.com. Why not today? Port Elizabeth's next mentorship takes place at the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium, the new home ground of Ned Bank Cup team, Chipper United. Good morning, PE contestants. How are you guys doing? Good, thanks. Excellent. Welcome to the second masterclass in our presenter search on three competition. Your mentor today is not a stranger to our South African screens. He's one of the country's most formidable TV presenters. He's a model, he's an entrepreneur, and he's also one of South Africa's most stylish men. Put your hands together for Maps Mapunyane! Woo! Yeah, yeah! Next thing I see Maps Mapunyane running towards us out of the tunnel. I'm excited. Um, I'm such a huge fan and you know the adrenaline rush is just really rushing through my body. Maps, good to have you. <laughs> good to be here, good to be here. I've always wanted to walk in with uh, this great tunnel entrance and have a massive audience waiting for me even if it's just three uh, or four, <laughs> four people. Guys, firstly, congratulations on making it this far, uh, but it's only going to get harder from here. My job is to tell you and show you tips on in-action interviews. An in-action interview is doing the interview whilst you're doing something else. 
There's a challenge coming up. I don't know what it is, but I hope I don't have to run. Like I've got a little <laughs> thing going on down here. So running and I are not like the best of people. Yeah. Contestants, we've got three Chippy United players that have graciously afforded us their time to be a part of this challenge. And Maps over here is going to oversee the entire process. The players are Mbuisilo Sambo, Tepo Mutsuneng, and James Okwosa. You'll each be given your own player and your own camera crew, and you'll need to conduct an actual in-action interview. The challenge begins now. I was quite nervous. This is the first time that I have a real person to interview, so I'm hoping to um, prove myself. My thoughts about this challenge are like everywhere. I've never played soccer in my life. I want to pick up on his energy and vice versa, so I'm really hoping for the best. There are a few things in life I can't do, but running for 90 minutes is definitely one of them. But I know someone who can, Mr. James Okosa, who is the captain, excuse me, of Chippa United and the defender of the team as well. Right now, I think Masinga is uh, slightly missing the mark. He's walking too fast and he's a bit too loud and he's overpowering the whole interview and he's not paying attention to the basics. He seems to be forgetting about the fact that the camera is there. I, I told him to be very aware of where the camera is at all times. And he's snapping in and out of character and he's blocking off the camera. And now the camera has to adjust around him. I've never played a single soccer match in my entire life, but you promised to teach me how to dribble. So let's go. Yeah. Come on, you haven't. So what's the point? Is that you're going to come past me or thought, must I just get the ball? No. You're coming to me. Makes okay. me to think fast. Then. Okay. Oh, and I'm gone. The All right, guys, bring it in, bring it in. All right, Masinga, when you're asking the questions, don't ask them so fast. So, Mr. Okosa, how are you? It seemed like you were rushing the questions and he was speaking at a nice tempo and you guys were not at the same level. Let's give it another go. There are a few things in life I can't do, but running for 90 minutes has to be one of them. Today, I know someone who can, Mr. James Okosa, who's a captain and defender of Chippa United. He's also going to be teaching me how to dribble later on. But I like where Masinga took it in the second take. He slowed things down, which made the interview a whole lot easier to take in. Whether you choose to push, pull, or pump your way to that perfect physique, all that matters is that you get your heart rate popping. And that's exactly what we're planning to do outside the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium in Port Elizabeth today. First thing I'm thinking is trying to incorporate um, all of these different elements of doing an activity, speaking to the guests, but also looking good on camera at the same time. And someone to help me out with that is none other than Sambo, a Chippy United player, who is obviously an expert in, in his sport. How do you deal with playing at stadiums such as this and representing your club at such national levels? It's all about the support. We enjoy the support of uh, the fans here in the region, so it's all about enjoying the game. Miguel, that was a good first attempt. Just a few points that I want you to keep in mind up. You can't just start doing the action without setting it up before. So you just started kicking the ball as opposed to saying, Sambo, you're a defender, show me some skills, some uh, hand-eye coordination and passing the ball around, how do I do it? And then the other thing is that I, I made it very particular. My first point was your um, keeping aware of where the camera is. Just keep that in mind and have another attempt. Good job. One of the main points um, about Maps' feedback that surprised me was just the idea of blocking myself off to the camera. I think that after being involved in entertainment, it's, it's one of the most basic principles. That was something that I was very irritated with myself, that I made a mistake like that, and I hope to improve from now on. Tepo, you are making strides in the PSL. Absolutely phenomenal work. Tell me, where did your passion originate? Uh, look, when you grow up as a young boy, you try to look as much sporting coach as you can. Kumsa started off well, but three questions later and we still haven't moved. Where's the action? You know what? We have done enough talking. From my side, I think we should get physical. Let's go. This. So it's very promising. She's moving to the net, but then she stops again and ask the question from a static position, as opposed to prompting and setting up an action. What are the top five tips that you give me? My first take with the in-action interview was just really nerve-wracking. Um, I felt a lot of pressure because I have to accommodate the viewers, remember camera position, apply all the knowledge that I got from the masterclass to the team. So she did start doing some action, but now we're on question five, and we've probably lost a few viewers. What was that? You started with three questions. You were static the whole time, and then when you moved to the net, we thought we were going to be led into a nice action while you were asking the next question. We were gonna learn something, but then you asked your fourth question in the net, static. 
and you didn't really get to how to do things while doing the action. Maps' feedback was very positive because I think any sort of critique is, is, is a point in the right direction. That means they do want you to grow. Okay, I need to get the most fundamental positions for kicking a ball. I think a mistake that we make the most is to just position your foot there and lose it. Pumza's second take is a lot better. She's taking direction very well, and she's cut down her questions from five to three, which are great context for the actual interview. However, she's lost the celebration of the moment. She's concentrating too much on the action and her questions that the enjoyment of the actual interview has gone out the window. Direction and focus are the name of the game, as our PE trio discovered. So, Maps, how did it go? Leanne, yeah, after that tricky challenge, they were definitely a mixed bag, and I'll have some mixed feedback for the judges. Well, our judges, Jeannie D. Bonang and Fat Joe, will definitely be scrutinizing every angle and frame from our Cape Town and PE masterclasses. Stay tuned next week as we take a look at the masterclasses from Durban and Johannesburg. Good night. While three contestants will go on to launch their dream careers as presenters, two savvy NetBank account holders will get a taste of the Jet Set life and win a trip for two to Zanzibar, courtesy of NetBank. If you're a savvy NetBank account holder, SMS the keyword DREAMS along with a short description of your dream island experience to 33728. That's 33728 to make the things that really matter happen. Entries close on Monday the 20th of April. Find the terms and conditions on presentersearch on 3.com. Make things that really matter happen.